the rainfall expected to increase from tomorrow. Island-wide curfew will be lifted in Colombo and Gompaha after two months. Death toll in USA due to COVID-19 near 100,000. The Med Department have stated that they are part of the News First newsroom here in Colombo. Now taking a look at your weather news, I think it's no surprise that weather has been inclement to say the least over the last few days. Now the Med Department has issued a release to give us some information on what the current situation is and also to give us an insight into what to expect over the coming few days. Now what they cite is that there is a low level atmospheric pressure build up around Sri Lanka at the moment and as you can see here in these areas highlighted in red and that is what is causing these rains to happen and this warning has particularly been given to western Sabargamo central southern and Uwa provinces right now the weather seems to be okay but they do expect it to get worse over the next few days particularly on the 26th 27th 28th and 29th of May 2020 these are the dates they have singled out as high risk in terms of inclement weather now moving on they also feel that 100 millimeters or more of rainfall will be seen during this period as well in terms of actions suggested the med department have also made a number of recommendations into the precautions the general public can take to minimize the damage that is caused uh, by the oncoming or the incoming inclement weather as well they suggest that people living in hilly areas particularly these areas that tend to be prone uh, to uh, landslides and other natural disasters take the necessary precautions and potentially given the rating given to those areas even move away uh, for their own safety more on that as well they also advise that the public pay attention and be alert to the advisories of the med department the med department has promised to continuously update the public over the course of the next few days up until this inclement weather period passes and also they have asked that for any emergency situation that arises for us the people to reach the local disaster management officers as well that's all from the weather center for this hour join us again on our prime time news bulletin as we continue to bring you the very latest both in the weather here in sri lanka and in the region as well. I've been Deshan Gorvala. Thank you, Deshan, for that comprehensive update. In more weather-related news, rainwater in several areas in the Mathura districts has not receded. According to a correspondent, many farms have been destroyed due to this. Many farms are still inundated after the heavy downpour experienced in the area. Meanwhile, farmers claim that many vegetable farms have been destroyed. All of the crops were destroyed. Nobody came here to check on us. They didn't even ask what happened. The flood came and destroyed all the paddy fields and vegetables that we grew after years. The small and large tea estates of owners are helpless. Many domestic cultivations have also been destroyed. We can't find those seeds in the market. We conducted these farms facing hardships. Because of the current condition, all of them were destroyed. A group of Sri Lankans stranded in Seychelles are requesting the government to bring them back to the country. Around 2,000 Sri Lankans are currently residing in Seychelles for work, education and other activities. 350 people among them are stranded due to visa expiring and several other issues. Meanwhile, 35 Seychelles citizens arrived on the island on Saturday. On their arrival, state parties stated that the group had come to Sri Lanka seeking medical treatment on a diplomatic request. There are Sri Lankans stranded in Seychelles asking that they be brought down. However, there is a passenger flight that arrives with 35 Seychelles citizens. We do not know who these people are. Have they been sent for quarantine? In which hospital are they being treated? Or did they come for a different purpose? We have heard during the past that money belonging to certain people are kept in Seychelles. Is this something related to that? The government should provide detailed information about those 35 people and what they are doing in Sri Lanka. The number of people infected with COVID-19 in the island has increased to 1,141.
52 more people tested positive for COVID-19 yesterday. 47 of them had arrived from Kuwait and were placed under quarantine. A member of the Sri Lanka Navy and an individual who had arrived from Indonesia were also among the rest. Currently, 458 patients are receiving treatment at the hospital. Meanwhile, 14 people left hospitals after recovering yesterday. Accordingly, the total recovery stands at 674. Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva said 7,520 people are stationed at the quarantine centres. He further noted, majority of the members attached to the Sri Lanka Navy have undergone PCR tests. The President's Media Division issuing a statement said the curfew will remain in effect until 4 a.m. Tuesday, the 26th of May. Island-wide curfew is currently in effect. Starting tomorrow, island-wide night curfew will be imposed from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. daily until further notice. Also, travel between districts, apart from Colombo and Gampaha, will be permitted. The Director General of Health Services, Sanil Jasinghe, said 50 health guidelines to bring back the country to normalcy will be released today. We will release 50 health guidelines to bring back the country to normalcy via the website of the Health Ministry later this evening. Thus, it is important to release them in advance to the web as well in printed materials in order to create awareness among the people, through which you have the opportunity of continuing your day-to-day -day activities, business matters and attend to your work purposes. <laughs> What is meant by opening the country again is that you should start your day-to-day -day activities. The virus still be prevalent in the country. As you would have seen, even the people who had arrived from countries vulnerable were tested positive for the virus, especially the people who came from the Middle East. Certain people who we do not have records can go out even during the quarantine period. Also, patients without symptoms also can be in the community. They could spread the disease. We cannot act with fear with all this. It is important to restart our day-to-day -day activities despite the risk. However, if you act indifferent and careless, it is a risk. Even if you restart activities, it is important to maintain social distancing, wearing masks and using a hand sanitizer. You have to live with this process, not just for a few days, but for few months. We have many more years to live with COVID-19. According to data compiled by John Hopkins University, more than 345,000 people globally have now died and more than 5.4 million are infected with the novel coronavirus. Looking back at your local news, we at News First inquired about the latest developments on the elections from the chairman of the National Elections Commission, Mahinda Deshapriya. We have informed the Supreme Court that the general elections cannot be held on the 20th of June. We can only make a statement regarding this since we are discussing the reasons for that and about the date in court. A program is in place to get advice from health authorities on how to conduct elections according to health and safety regulations. That is what's happening tomorrow as well. The issuing of preferential numbers will also happen after the court clarifies whether there are any legal impediments to hold the election. <laughs> The All Island Bakery Association claims the prices of food will be increased as a result of the increase in taxes on essential items. The government decided to increase the special tax imposed on a number of essential commodities including sugar, dal, potato, dry chili and tin fish. The special tax on grapes, apples, oranges, dates, cashew, corn, spices and palm oil were increased from the 22nd of this month. We will have to increase the prices of the products even if the restaurants are open by tomorrow due to the new taxes imposed, especially the price of a rice packet and several other products such as vegetable rolls, savouries, kottu, egg roti, fried rice and other food items prepared at the restaurants because everything is linked to essential goods such as coconut oil.
From that, we bring to a close this edition of Lunchtime News on TV1. For the news first team, I'm Martin Satyanesan. Have yourself a wonderful afternoon.